Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to the 10 to 80% charging speed and charging time test where we put the manufacturer's claim charging speed to the test, and we also measure the 10 to 80% charging time and average charging speed, which in my opinion is the most and most relevant range of charging. And you know, your peak speed really doesn't matter because you only have that over a short period of time, but your average speed from something like 10 to 80% will really give you the indication in the real world how quickly you can charge an EV and why we're doing the 10 to 80%. Well, that is because when you take an EV on a long trip, you usually go down to about 10% state to charge before you connect to a charger. And you usually don't want to go above 80% state to charge because most EVs charge slow above 80% state to charge, including this Polestar 2. So, but you know, that maximum charging speed, which Polestar claim is 150 kilowatts and this Polestar 2 is under optimal conditions and we have less than optimal conditions outside because it is minus 7 degrees Celsius here in February here in Oslo. So to, you know, make the conditions as good as possible, we want to heat up the battery. But this car doesn't have manual preconditioning and doesn't have automatic preconditioning like something like a Tesla Model 3 where you can put a supercharger into the destination in the GPS and the car will warm up the battery. This does have none of that. So we have to do it manually by something called yo-yo driving. So we have to take the car on the road and do as many acceleration runs as possible to generate heat within the battery. So that's what we're gonna do. We're currently at 23% state to charge. I'm gonna take the car on the motorway, do as many acceleration runs as possible, run the battery down to below 10% and then connect to a rapid charger. Okay guys, the results are in and we're going to go through the results, the charging session, all the stats in detail and I'm also going to overlay the video down in the corner while we are going through the charging session and I'm talking about and commenting it. And just before we start off, I didn't have the heater on, the ignition was off, so we weren't draining more electricity than that was actually going into the battery. So the heater wasn't draining anything at all and at the end it was getting quite cold in here but I wanted the, the results to be as precise as possible as I've done in every other of these tests where I just have the ignition and the heater off. So we connect to the charger at around 8% state to charge and at 10% state to charge we are at 104 kilowatts. We peak quite early at 16% state to charge with the speed of 124 kilowatts. And then at 30% state to charge, the speed has dropped to 103 kilowatts and it just keeps fluctuating. Once we th it throttles, it climbs up a bit again. At 40% state to charge, the speed has actually climbed to 110 kilowatts. But at 50% state to charge, the speed is down to 78 kilowatts and it just drops from there. At 60% state to charge, we are at 64 kilowatts. And then at 70% state to charge, the speed is down to 50 kilowatts. And then the real blow, at 78% state to charge, the speed drops to 24 kilowatts and remains at that speed to 80% state of charge. So yeah, um, it is minus seven degrees Celsius right now. It was minus between five and six when we charged. So that will of course, you know, um, color the results, but every other EV I have tested the 10 to 80% state to charge charging speed test has been under similar conditions. So our total charging time was 46 minutes and 10 seconds. And in that time we got delivered 57.268 kilowatt hours. That was the juice that was delivered. So how the math works out is that 46 minutes and 10 seconds works out to 46.16 minutes or 0.769 hours. So we take the juice delivered, which is 57.268 kilowatt hours divided by the time, which is 0.769 hours. We get the average speed of 74.5 kilowatts. And then I'm going to overlay the charging curve here. So you can see that it does, you know, it's a bit like a saber tooth where it just uh, fluctuates a bit. And then once we get to around 50% state to charge, it just, just drops off. 
And if you saw my previous video, the uh, uh, you know cold weather, winter range efficiency and charging test, at the end there, I got quite decent speeds. And I thought that Tesla, now Tesla, Polestar had done something with the battery management, but I don't think they have done that. I just think that the uh, heat loss from this battery pack when driving at motorway speeds is quite high because heat is generated within the battery. And we actually got better speeds in that charging session than we got here with Yo-Yo driving goes to support that hypothesis. And that 124 kilowatts maximum charging speed is the exact same maximum charging speed I got with the Polestar 2 back in October when I drove to Gothenburg and back again. And the ambient temperature outside was 14 degrees Celsius. So I'm not sure why we're getting the same charging curve and charging speed in minus seven degrees Celsius. Is the battery management so poor that uh, the only way to really heat up this battery is to drive it on a motorway? I'm not sure. But yeah, the average speed of 74.5 kilowatts is just a tad slower in, than what we got in the Volvo XC40 P8 recharge. Link to that video in the description box down below, which was I think 76 kilowatts. And we are about 10 and a half kilowatts slower than the 2021 Tesla Model 3 long range that I had last week. Link to that video also in the description box down below. So all things considered, comparing it to the XC40 and comparing it to the Tesla Model 3 long range, it's not too shabby, but we're still at half of the claimed maximum charging speed. So 10 to 80% state to charge will take you 46 minutes, which is nine minutes longer than it takes in a Tesla Model 3 long range 2021 model. But remember, that has a smaller battery and the juice delivered there is 53 kilowatt hours instead of 57. But it is more efficient. You are able to go longer from 10 to 80% state to charge. So that is something to consider. So the charging time is longer than the Tesla Model 3. The charging time is longer than in the XC40 P8. And yeah, considerably slower than in my Audi e-tron, which I also have done this test in. But yeah, I hope that uh, Polestar, because I think Tesla is going to do this, ups up the speed in their battery pack. I know from the podcast from the CEO of Volvo, or it might have been the EV technician, I'm not sure, I'll put the correct person down here below, said that they are working on preheating. So would that, you know, yield better results? Yes, it probably would. But considering that the long range Tesla Model 3 I tested was with preheating, it only got an average speed of 10 kilowatts faster. So there is hope for this battery pack. As it stands now in the winter time with this test, it's not the best result. But it's not too far off the 2021 Tesla Model 3. So if there is room for improvement as they, you know, get more data in from the battery packs and, you know, degradation and how it handles the charging speed, they may up the speed. We are crossing our fingers that they do that. And also with the, you know, possibility of preheating it, if that comes in an OTA up update, that will possibly up the speed up any even more. I mean, if we got close to around half an hour from 10 to 80 percent state to charge, maybe like around 100 kilowatts of average charge speed, I think I would be very happy with it. I think most people would be very happy with it. But as it stands now at 46 minutes, it is, you know, uh, penalized by the slow charging speed high in the state to charge charging. You know, when we get to 78% state to charge, it's just chopped in half. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye. Cloud in the sky.